Chicken pox. Chicken pox is a common illness for children. So what is chicken pox? Chicken pox is caused by a bi virus called varicella zoster. So this is a virus. Children who get the virus often develop a rash of spots that looks like blisters all over their bodies. So the blisters are small and sit on an area of the red skin that can be anywhere from the size of a pencil to the size of a razor or a dime. Source of chicken box. Chicken pox is spread one person to another. It is caused by the virus, the varicella zoster. It causes sneezing, the coughing, and the sharing of food and drinks. Weak immune system is ex extremely contagious when you have the sneezing, coughing, sharing of foods or drinks, touching fluid from the blister can spread virus. Person spreads virus without knowing, usually contracted by intentionally inhaling the virus. So, the common signs of the chicken pox is the itchy rash and the red spots of or the blisters. Usually get it around the age of 12. Can cure earlier or later. Kids get chicken pox easily. They spread germs effectively. It's not a bad thing for them to get. They'll create antibodies which will prevent any late, later infections from occurring. Rashes appears after 2 to 3 days. So for the early symptoms of the chicken pox, you will feel the headache and then you will have the fever, the sore throat, and then the loss of appetite and fatigue. So whenever we have a chicken pox, we have the things that we should do and we, should that we shouldn't do. So these are the do's and don'ts in having the chicken pox. Do's is stay at home from school for 5 days after the first spots arrive or until all the blisters are dry. Have a plenty of drinks. Eat ice cream and jelly to suit your mouth if you have a blisters on your mouth. Have a cool bath. Put oil or calamine lotion or other things to ease the pain. If you are really itchy, see the doctor when, who may give you some antihistamine tablets to help with the itch. For the don'ts, don't scratch the blisters of your chicken pox so it may not cause you scar or be infected. Don't spend time in the contact of the elderly, pregnant woman, and in newborn infants because they are easily infected. Don't give the child aspirin-based products. See your doctors as if you need any medicines that could treat your children. So how we can be avoided the chicken pox? Your child should get a vaccine. So for a dietary management to have food to eat and not to eat when having chicken pox. For our foods to eat, we have vegetables. Eating lots of vegetables are an excellent source of vital vitamins and minerals, which are essential to reduce the infection and rush. Try eating vegetables like carrots and coriander, as these vegetables have shown great results to cure chicken pox. Have lots of fruits. Grow or blend into pieces. Best thing in fruits are oranges for vitamin C, apple, and pear. But absolutely no citrus fruits due to the acids that may hurt the mouth or mouth ulcer or the blisters on your mouth. Drink plenty of water. Drinking plenty of water and keep your body well hydrated. It will help you control the fever and also excrete the body needs. No greasy meat, no junk 
foods are snuff or no processed food. All these foods aggravate the rashes and can worsen your condition and can cause breakup of more blisters. Chicken pox is one of the common illness for children. We can never totally avoid it, but we can try to prevent it through getting vaccinated and having a healthy diet to have a strong immune system. And if one happens to have this illness, we can manage it by eating the right amount of vegetables and fruits and drinking up to 8 glasses of water. So be healthy and happy! Iron in, anemia out. I am Kendra Shudu Maglonzo, your nutrition student, and our topic for today will be all about anemia. It has been estimated that between 50 to 80 percent of children in Asia and about 20 percent of children and adolescents in Western countries are iron deficient. Among Filipinos, 2 out of 10 have iron deficiency anemia. To understand anemia, it helps to know a little bit about breathing. Have you ever tried to hold your breath? At first, you feel fine. After a short time though, you need to take a breath. That's because when we breathe, our lungs take in oxygen from the air. We need oxygen to live. We also need a way to get the oxygen from our lungs to the rest of the body. Blood flows like a river through every part of the body. The blood carries the oxygen, but the oxygen needs something to hang on to. It needs a boat. And the boat that carries oxygen are red blood cells. So every time you take a breath, you breathe in. You breathe in oxygen and your red blood cells carry oxygen to every cell in your body. Anemia occurs when a person doesn't have the normal amount of red blood cells or if the person is low on hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, a protein, is an important part of red blood cells because it gives the oxygen something to stick to. Every red blood cell in the body needs iron. Iron gives strength to the blood to carry or to bind with oxygen. So that oxygen can get to where it needs to go. But if fewer red blood cells are being produced in the body, it may lead to a condition called anemia. When someone has anemia, less oxygen reaches the cell and tissue, and that can affect how the body works. A iron plays an important role in muscle function energy creation, brain development, and as a result, a child with iron deficiency anemia may have a learning and behavioral problems. A kid who has anemia may not know it because he or she may not have any symptoms and they call it asymptomatic. Looking pale can be a sign of anemia because there is less blood flowing through the blood vessels in the skin. A fast heartbeat can be another sign of anemia because when you don't have as many red blood cells, the heart has to work harder to get the same amount of blood and oxygen to the body. If anemia worsens, a kid who has once been very active may become worn out quickly so he or she may feel weak or tired. But why do kids get anemia? Let's find out. There are several reasons why the body might not make enough RBCs or red blood cells. But often, it's because someone is not getting enough iron. Iron is a nutrient. 
found in meat, dried beans, and green leafy vegetables. Without iron, the body can't make hemoglobin. That's the oxygen carrying part of a red blood cell. Besides iron, your body needs the vitamins B12 and folic acid to make RBCs. You get these vitamins in the foods you eat, like meat, eggs, dairy products, citrus fruits, green vegetables, and fortified cereals. Anemia can also develop if the bone marrow is not working properly. This may be because of an infection or a chronic illness such as arthritis or kidney disease. In rare cases, someone might be born without the ability to make enough RBCs. Certain medications like chemotherapy for cancer can keep the bone marrow from being able to make enough RBCs. So our first reason why do kids get anemia is because not enough RBC are being made. If the life of a red blood cell is cut short for any reason, the bone marrow may not be able to keep up with the increased demand for new ones. One reason that RBCs get destroyed is because their shape changes. If you would look at them through a microscope, you would see that they are round and flattened. That's a good shape for moving through tight spaces as blood circulates around the body. But if the shape changes, as is the case in sickle cell anemia, the red blood cells can get stuck and break. Sickle cells are curved like crescent moons. This shape makes it hard for them to move throughout the body. Sickle cell anemia Sickle cell anemia is one of many conditions which can shorten the life of red blood cells. Certain medications, infections, and chronic diseases also may cause this type of anemia. So our second reason why do kids get anemia is because that too many red blood cells are being destroyed. When you lose a little blood because you cut yourself or you have a nose bleed, your bone marrow is able to make enough blood so you don't develop anemia. But if you lose a lot of blood which may happen in a serious accident, your bone marrow may not be able to replace the red blood cells quickly enough. If someone loses a little blood over a long period of time, it can also lead to anemia. By losing more iron in the lost blood than is taken into the body by food you eat. Without enough iron in the body, the bone marrow cannot make enough red blood cells. This can happen in girls who have heavy menstrual periods especially if they don't get enough iron in their diets or the people who have inflammatory bowel diseases. So, the third reason why do kids get anemia is because that too many red blood cells are lost, maybe from bleeding. How is anemia treated? The treatment of anemia, of course, depends on the cause. In kids, the most common cause of anemia is not getting enough iron in their diets. But some kids may need to take medicine containing iron to help their bodies make more red blood cells. It is also important to eat more foods that are rich in iron. If the anemia is caused by an infection, Usually, the anemia will go away when the infection is treated and the body gets healthy again. Whatever the cause, someone with severe anemia may need a blood transfusion. A transfusion means that donated blood is given through tubes in a vein. This may sound a little scary, but millions of kids and adults have blood transfusion every year. 
except for inserting the tube, they don't hurt. And getting a blood transfusion is the fastest way to get blood to deliver oxygen to all cells in the body. Kids who have anemia may have to take it easy for a while. But once your body starts making enough red blood cells, oxygen can reach all their tissues again and they'll get some of that kid energy back. Let us now take a look at some of the food items that are rich in iron. For the dietary management, here are some food items that should be included in the diet of someone who has iron deficiency anemia. We have here raisins, pumpkin seeds, soybean, and of course, green leafy vegetables. Also, potato, oatmeal, brown rice, and black beans. Then, dark chocolate, broccoli, tofu, black-eyed beans, and sunflower seed, green peas, strawberry, and spinach. There you have it. Once again, I am Kendra Maglonzo, your nutrition student. So remember, iron in, anemia out. Good day everyone, my name is Nikirin Tagyed, a nutrition student. Today I will be discussing about uh, scoliosis in children. Okay, now what is ascariasis? Ascariasis is an infection caused by ascariasis lobricoides, which is one species of roundworm. Next, infection caused by roundworm, which are a type of parasitic worm that can be as small as 1 millimeter or as long as 1 meter are relatively common. Ascariasis is the most common roundworm infection. According to World Health Organization, as many as 1 billion people are infected by ascariasis worldwide. Another thing is, ascariasis is most common in places without modern sanitation. It is transmitted through unsafe food and water, municipally treated drinking water decreases the frequency of the disease. Now, what causes ascariasis infection? Ascariasis or roundworm reproduces inside the intestine. The worm goes through several stages. One, swallowed eggs first hatch in the intestine. Second, the larvae then move through the bloodstream to the lungs. After maturing, the roundworms leave that lungs and return to the stomach and small intestine. That there they lay eggs, then the cycle continues. Some eggs are excreted through the feces, other eggs hatch the and return to the lungs. Then, ascariasis occurs when the eggs that, they, that have been excreted in human feces infect a new person. Then, infection can happen in feces Contaminate water or food. Ascariasis can also be passed directly from person to person. Now, what are the symptoms of ascariasis? Ascariasis produce, produces different symptoms in, in its various stages. Your conditions depend on where you have eggs or larvae in your body. Symptoms associated with roundworms in the lungs include coughing or gagging, vomiting or vomiting roundworm, wheezing or shortness of breath. Next is roundworms in your intestine cause the following symptoms. One, 
Nasriya to vomiting to irregular stools for stomach pain and weight loss. Another symptoms are some people with a large infestation may experience other symptoms such as fatigue and fever. A major infestation can cause extreme discomfort. Ascariasis can also cause complication. This include bowel obstruction and pancreatitis, complication of cure when worms gather in other areas of the body. They may cause blockade, inflammation, or other damage. Now, what are the complications? Mild cases of ascariasis usually don't have complication. If you have heavy infestation, potentially dangerous complications may include a. Nutritional deficiencies Children of ascariasis are especially at risk of nutritional deficiencies, loss of appetite, and insufficient absorption of digested food can occur. Second, second intestinal blockage, which is in heavy ascariasis infestation, a mass of worms can block a portion of your intestine, causing severe abdominal cramping and vomiting. The blockage can even perforable the intestinal wall or appendix, causing internal bleeding or which is hemorrhage. Last, duct blockage. In some cases, worms may block the narrow ducts of your liver or pancreas, causing severe pain. Now, how is ascariasis diabetes? When not all people with ascariasis have symptoms. Blood and stool samples are far more accurate way of detecting roundworms. Abdominal x-ray can also be used to diagnose the disease. Now, there are three risk factors of happy ascariasis. First is age. Most people who have ascariasis are 10 years old or younger. Children in this age group may be at high risk because they're more likely to play in dirt. Second, warm climate, which is ascariasis, worms thrive in mild climates. In the United States, ascariasis is more common in the South Asia, but it's more prevalent in developing countries with warm temperature year-round. The last risk factor is poor sanitation. Ascariasis is widespread in developing countries where human feces are allowed to mix with local soil. Now, who is at risk for ascariasis? First, those who are lack of modern hygiene and sanitation infrastructure. Next, use of human feces for fertilizer living in this or visiting a warm climate next is exposure to an outdoor environment where dirt might be ingested in children the next is we can prevent ascariasis in our children so for the prevention safe and sanitary disposal of human waste which can transmit eggs Areas of world that use human feces as fertilizer must thoroughly cook all food and clean them with a proper iodine solution, particularly fruits and vegetables. Children who are adopted from developing nations are frequently screened for worms as a precautionary measure. Kids who live in underdeveloped areas of the world may be prescribed a preventive deworming medication. There are two practices.
process recommended for all children to avoid cutting ascariasis. 1. Try as much as possible to keep kids from putting things in their mouth. 2. Teach kids to wash hands thoroughly and frequently, especially after using the bathroom and before eating. Now, ascariasis can easily be caught, but we have learned that there are preventive measures which can help avoid this common health problem. Th thanks for watching. See you next time. Hello, good day everyone. My name is Annie Grace Shungaan, your student nutrition, and my topic is about dealing with dental caries. So I will be discussing about dental caries which is common in children. Dental caries or tooth decay is a major oral health problem in most industrialized countries affecting 60 to 90 percent of school children and the vast majority of adults. Dental caries is the destruction disease of the teeth that starts at an external surface usually the enamel, and it is possible the most widespread human disease and the greatest cause of this loss. Dental caries may not be life-threatening, but it certainly has caused so much trouble, pain, wasted money, and has created nutritional problems. Causes of dental caries Dental caries is caused by the action of acid in the enamel surface. The acid is produced when the sugars, mainly the sucrose, in foods or drinks react with bacteria present in the dental biofilm or plaque on the tooth surface. And if the plaque allowed to build up, the acid can begin to break down the other surface of the tooth and can eventually enter and damage the soft part of the center of the tooth. So other causes of Dental caries is car cariogenic food. Things that is high in carbohydrates and sugar or cariogenic foods that contain fermentable carbohydrates like hard candies, high sucrose containing food, and solid sticky foods like cookies, potato chips, crackers, donuts, and etc. Such foods when become in contact with microorganisms in the mouth can cause a drop in pH and stimulate the caries process. Why so many children have tooth decay? Other causes are improper brushing of teeth, delaying brush of teeth, no brushing of teeth after eating. Now, let's discuss how a child can prevent tooth decay. Let's discuss the preventive measures for this. The first is to maintain good oral hygiene to brushing and flossing the teeth properly. So here are some guidelines in proper way of brushing the teeth. The first is place the brush along the gum line at 45 mm, angle, 45 degrees angle, and the brush should contact both the tooth surface and the gum line. So next is gently brush the outer tooth surface of two to three teeth using a big break by breaking back, forth, and rolling motion. Move the brush to the next group of two to three teeth and repeat, repeat again. So for the third step, third step, maintain a 45 degrees angle with brush contacting the tooth surface and gum line. Gently brush using back, and rolling motion along all the inner tooth surface. Next one is peel brush vertically, vertically behind the front teeth. Make several up and down strokes using the front half of the brush. So last one is place the brush against the biting surface of the teeth and use the gentle back and forth scrubbing motion. And brush also the tongue from back 
to France to remove the odor producing bacteria. Flushing the teeth, the next step is flossing. And flushing is an important part of oral hygiene. And it removes flakes and food particles from between your teeth and under gum line, where a toothbrush cannot always reach the teeth. For the dietary management, dietary management, uh, it includes eating healthy food. And positive habits of snacking, karyostatic, or the foods that do not contribute to decay, such as protein foods, vegetables, fats, and sugarless gums. Here are some samples of karyostatic foods. In order to have a healthy and happy smile, we need to follow the following guidelines. So, the first one is proper way of brushing the teeth. Second is flossing. And last is proper way of eating healthy foods. That's all. Thank you. For today, we have discussed different topics. And this topic helped inform us of common health problems. Common health problems certainly affect every child. Even if they are common, we should never disregard them for they might lead to more serious problems. So dad, mom, ape, kuya, please, please stay healthy, happy, and safe.